Behind the Castle Hill Lighthouse on America's North Atlantic coast stands the historic city of Newport, visiting place of American presidents from George Washington to John Kennedy, and the site of some of America's finest early architecture. On November 6, 1961, Newport is the first meeting place in America of Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru and President John F. Kennedy. The Prime Minister's daughter, Mrs. Indira Gandhi, is warmly welcomed by President Kennedy, and Ambassador to India, John Galbraith, greets a familiar friend. A group of Indian students from nearby Brown University welcomes the distinguished visitors. Washington, D.C., capital of the United States, a city familiar to Prime Minister Nehru, wears the colors of autumn and a mantle of fallen leaves as it prepares to receive the Prime Minister for the third time in 12 years. President and Mrs. Kennedy escort Mr. Nehru and his daughter on the short flight from Newport to Washington aboard the presidential plane. Vice President and Mrs. Johnson, Secretary of State and Mrs. Rusk, and other high dignitaries are present to greet the Prime Minister and his daughter. The cordial atmosphere of the greeting reflects the great affection and high regard in which the American nation holds the Prime Minister and his daughter. I wish to express, uh, Prime Minister, on behalf of the people of the United States, our great satisfaction in welcoming you once more to our country which you have visited uh, in earlier days. So, Prime Minister, we welcome you here to the shores of this country as a friend, as a great world leader, as one who has, uh, in his own life and times, stood for those uh, basic aspirations which the United States stands for today. Prime Minister, we're glad to see you again. Mr. President, Ms. Kennedy, I feel deeply honored and happy being here again and to receive this great welcome from you, more particularly not for the formal side of it, but for the friendship which animated your words. You have been good enough in the past also to refer to my country in terms which evoked a warm response in our hearts. I am grateful to you, sir, for your warm welcome and to Mrs. Kennedy also. Following the welcoming ceremonies, the Prime Minister and the President fly by helicopter to the White House, residence of the American President. Throughout the capital city, there prevails an atmosphere of keen interest and curiosity in the Prime Minister's visit. Several meetings with President Kennedy are to be held, meetings which will permit an exchange of views and ideas between two men who will spare no effort in their pursuit of world peace. Later that evening, the Prime Minister and his daughter arrive at the White House to be greeted by President and Mrs. Kennedy, who have arranged an intimate and informal dinner, during which the two world leaders and the two first ladies will continue to become better acquainted.
following morning, the nation's influential newspapers note the interest of the American people in the Prime Minister. That afternoon, the third meeting between the two leaders takes place. Scores of reporters and photographers crowd around to hear the Prime Minister reply, very well indeed, when asked about the progress of the discussions. Indian Foreign Secretary M.J. Desai and Secretary of State Dean Rusk are present for the talks. Several hours later, the President and Prime Minister emerged to tell the press that the free and very frank discussions had progressed well and covered a wide range of topics from the protection of free and independent states to the control of nuclear testing. As the Prime Minister completes his visit with President Kennedy, the nearby District of Columbia Children's Hospital is host to Mrs. Indira Gandhi. She meets young Jane Franzella, a polio victim, who is being given treatment in the modern whirlpool tank. This visit is a very special occasion for Jane, who has created a picture of a Japanese woman to give to the distinguished visitor. The gift is warmly admired and appreciated to the joy and delight of young Jane. In another area, Mrs. Gandhi and Mrs. Rusk observe the therapy designed to improve the muscular coordination of crippled children. Later that evening at the newly decorated Indian Embassy, Ambassador and Mrs. B.K. Nero give a reception in honor of the Prime Minister and his daughter. Distinguished visitors from the diplomatic world and old friends from the Washington community have come in large numbers to greet the visitors. The atmosphere, cordial, gay, and colorful, is a further indication of the high regard in which the nation's capital holds the Prime Minister. On the next day of the Prime Minister's visit, Mr. Nero is guest of the National Press Club, where several hundred correspondents of the national and world press have gathered to greet and listen to one of the world's most newsworthy figures. Mr. Chairman, members of the National Press Club, as you have been reminded, this is the third visit I have paid to this club as your guest. Speaking of India's development, the Prime Minister says... There's a dynamism in India today, people's minds in activities, in agriculture, in industry, in social services and the like. That is the main thing. And therefore, we, are, we have a good deal of faith in the future. During the traditional question and answer period after lunch, Mr. Nehru's replies cover a wide range of topics. First question, as the acknowledged leader of the neutralist bloc of nations, what is your opinion of the continued nuclear blasting by the USSR? Well, the answer is there is no neutralist bloc. Secondly, I'm not the leader of anybody. If you like, my people have done me the honor of uh, of uh, putting me in a very responsible position in India, so I can claim to speak on behalf of India. As for the resumption of nuclear tests by the Soviet Union, I have often stated that I have thought it a very harmful, disastrous thing.